everyone, this is Daria from ExpressRussian.com. In this video, I wanted to speak with you about how to start learning Russian or how to progress with your Russian once you already have some basic knowledge. So let's start. First of all, decide for yourself why you need to study the language and what you want to focus on. For those who is just starting, I always recommend to take either private or group courses for beginners, either offline or online. Why is this so important? This way you will be more organized and less inclined to drop off when things get tough. And they might get tough because actually learning a language is a long process and it requires um, energy, motivation, self-dedication and very good organization. Actually, anything new that we learn is a stress for our brain and uh, the normal response is avoided. That's why if you do not have someone who pushes you forward, who checks your homework, who motivates you, uh, it will be really tough to get through the most important first stage of language learning. Be it a course for beginners or a course for intermediate learners, I always advise my students to never skip their homework. Why is this important? Because actually doing homework allows us to spend time on our own and process the information in a way which is most convenient for our brain. And um, this way we uh, process the information, we understand it. The best time to do it is while doing your homework. Simple advice, but it really works. No matter what you study, languages or math or physics, you need some time on your own to figure out uh, the subject you're studying and um, you need to get to this aha moment when things will just start making sense. You will see your subject not just a list of boring rules, but as, as a system. And you know, language is a very logical system. I will explain you how you can apply this to learning Russian. When you learn languages, always try to find patterns. For example, in Russian, all adjectives of feminine gender in a nominative case have ending aya or yaya. Baishaya, for example, baishaya, mashina, big car. In English, suffix full means that the noun we are speaking about um, is full of some quality. For example, grateful or watchful. Finding and understanding those component parts uh, will accelerate your progress greatly. And once you're able to see those regularities in the written text and in the speech, the phrases will start making sense to you and uh, you, will be, you will be able to grasp more and more phrases. Also, did you know that knowing only 1000 words constitutes maybe 80% of basic Russian vocabulary, the vocabulary people use in daily speech. I have a free ebook on my website, which is called Basic Russian Vocabulary, which you can download for free and study at your own time. I will put the link in the description below and you can find it and study at your own convenience. My students often ask me, how do I remember all those Russian words? They really look so different from anything I know. Well, it's true, Russian language is a Slavic language and it is difficult for foreigners to, um, to learn the vocabulary because um, the roots of the words are Slavic. But in fact, knowing basic words will help you understand much more other words. I will tell you how. For example, word rabota, noun, it's a noun, rabota means work, and there is a verb rabotat, and there is an adjective rabochi, working. So just knowing the word rabota and knowing some language patterns, for example, that all Russian verbs, well, 90% of them have t in the end, and most of Russian adjectives have ending e or e in the end in the masculine gender will help you translate those words. You can clearly see that these words have a common root. So always try to figure out a root in every word. And then of course words conjugate. 
It's true, in Russian, almost every part of speech conjugates, and each part conjugates according to different rules, with different endings, and actually it's impossible to just learn the conjugation of uh, words of any part of speech just by uh, looking at the table and trying to memorize the endings. But this will not work. But what I advise you to do is take several most common verbs, for example, in Russian, хотеть, to want, иметь, to have, быть, to be, and learn their conjugation. And really learn it by heart. This way you will have some ready-made structures in your vocabulary, which you can already use quickly, because these are common words. And you will also be able to uh, make up other conjugations for other verbs using the same patterns. So don't be scared that you see so many unknown Russian words. In fact, you already know many of those words. For example, я работаю, I work, он работает, he works, ты работаешь, you work, я работала, I worked. Он работал, he worked. Again, we are speaking about the same verb работать, but this verb is conjugated according to gender and time. The same word работа. Работа means work. Я иду на работу. I'm going to work or I'm going to, the, to my office. Работу. Uh, the ending has changed. Я иду с работы. I'm going from work. Работы. The ending has changed again because this word conjugates, as I said, every part of speech conjugates in Russian, uh, conjugates by cases. So работа, работу, работы. These are all the same word. Работа just conjugated according to cases. Russian cases is one of the most difficult um, subjects in Russian grammar. And um, it's really a cornerstone subject. Um, and uh, once you master this, I think the rest of the Russian language grammar will be more or less simple. I have very good feedback about this course and I'm sure that uh, you will find it useful as well. If you are watching this video, I'm sure you have already come to the stage of uh, learning some basic grammar or some basic vocabulary. Maybe you have taken some course, maybe you have bought a book on Russian grammar and you were studying on your own. That's all great, but how do you actually progress after that, after you already have acquired this basic knowledge? Well, I advise you not to be stuck on this. Knowing basic Russian grammar will help you a lot um, because it will explain the why, it will explain how the language functions and um, you will be able to find the patterns in any new word that you will pick up. Use grammar rules and use basic uh, vocabulary that you have acquired as your reference point. Something that you can refer to later. Because I, I'm sure it's impossible to know all the rules by heart and all the endings and all the conjugation by heart. To actually understand Russian, you need to listen in Russian as much as possible and to speak Russian, you need to start speaking Russian. It's easier said than done, but that's how things are. Speaking Russian and reading in Russian or listening in Russian requires a lot of organization, self-organization, first of all, because actually if you don't have a teacher or you don't, you don't take a course, uh, you are studying on your own, you have to be pushing yourself. And that's hard. But uh, you know what? If you don't push, things don't move. You know, I know a lot of expats who relocated to a new country, but they do not have any necessity to speak in the language of the countries they live now. And they just uh, live uh, and speak their own language and uh, they never progress, you know? Years pass and they don't push and uh, they don't acquire any new language. So if you don't expose yourself to Russian, uh, it will be really hard to progress. That's why you need to organize this environment for yourself. Start small. Start with reading. Read short stories, side-by-side -side stories, uh, fairy tales, phrase books. 
The best is if you read the story with a familiar plot. In this way, you will be engaged and you will not be willing to drop off because you already know how the story ends and you will be only focused on learning new words. Then slowly move to blogs and uh, following Russian-speaking people on social media, maybe commenting a little bit in Russian, every little thing helps. There are two approaches to reading in a new language. The first one is uh, to just read, be, go with the flow, uh, don't stop, just uh, read the whole story till the very end and um, don't pay attention to new words. Just whatever you understood, you understood and that's it. And the second one is to study uh, with a pen, with a paper, with a dictionary. Tell me which one, uh, if you have ever studied a foreign language, which one works for you the best? Uh, as for me, I prefer the second one and this approach I also recommend to my students. Why? Because um, if you do not uh, acquire new words once, then you will see them again and you again you still don't know them and again and again and um, it means you have missed your chance to learn this word in the very beginning and most probably you will not learn it just at once just uh, from the first time. But if you translate it several times, again and again, if you come across this word or phrase and um, you pay attention to it and then you think, ah, already I knew this word, ah, already I knew this phrase, and uh, you repeat and repeat and repeat, and finally this phrase or this word will come from your passive vocabulary to your active vocabulary. And finally, you will be able to recognize it and use it in the speech. I, I always recommend to my students to buy themselves a, a nice notebook and a pen, um, a notebook which will be only de dedicated to learning Russian and um, you organize it in your own way. I recommend one part uh, you can concentrate on um, just vocabulary, just words, another part on some um, grammar rules, maybe some notes, maybe some uh, phrases and another part uh, just put some questions, questions you wanted to ask your teacher or a Russian friend, something that you need to clarify for yourself. If you read a book or a blog, always try to find it in print and underline words there and when you read it again and again, you can um, come back to those words and you will see already the translation of those words written above. In this way, you will uh, use the additional power of your visual memory and motor memory when you write. Another tip I give to my students is to learn words in the context. So not learn just one separate word, but uh, learn the whole phrase to see how the words are organized in the sentence. What about comprehension practice, the listening practice? I recommend starting with cartoons or movies uh, with uh, English or Russian subtitles. I understand that in the very beginning the best is to start with English subtitles and just to slowly acquire um, the habit of listening in Russian, but then move to Russian, uh, Russian subtitles or no subtitles at all. The best is, of course, if you are interested in the topic of those videos you are watching. Uh, this way you will stay engaged and um, you will be less inclined to drop off. I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have um, organized for you several playlists according to level, basic and intermediate, and according to topics. Uh, cartoons, uh, videos, songs. Uh, please browse through my channel and you will find, I'm sure you will find what you like. In language learning, regularity is the king. So if you just practice 20, um, 30 minutes a day or let's say one hour a week is better than if you practice um, two days out of whole month. That's a fact. So I advise you not to give up and uh, really work hard towards your goals. You will reach them in the end and you will be very happy that you did. And finally, when traveling to a Russian-speaking country, Always try to engage with locals as much as possible. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. You will be understood and your efforts will be greatly appreciated. 
Well, these were my recommendations for those who start learning Russian and who already have some basic knowledge who want to advance further on. I wish you good luck with your studies and I hope to see you soon among my subscribers on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok or as students on my courses. Bye-bye for now. Пока-пока!